Is Nigeria's criminal justice system working? That question can be answered from many dimensions. But in the light of the enactment of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act six and a half years ago, there's no way reference will not be made to how effective the implementation of that legislation has been. As we have done in various parts and times on this program, we shall again be looking at Nigeria's Criminal Justice Act. But this time, we want to break it down into various parts. Welcome to the scale, the scale of justice. I am Femi Okewu. For quite a number of people, lawyers inclusive, their assessment of the success or failure of the criminal justice system in Nigeria always points to the number of awaiting trial inmates in our correctional centers. Even when there is a jailbreak, people are quick to point to the fact that these jailbreaks, even though emanating from external forces, must have also been induced by the high number of awaiting trials. But then, do they have any correlation? Our correspondent, Victor Azu, is going to give us a peg. He looks at jailbreaks, the congestion in uh, prison centers, and how the Criminal Justice Act can help in diffusing detention in our jail centers. On Saturday, 23rd October 2021, Nigerians woke up to the news of yet another jailbreak, this time at the Oyo State Custodial Center, Abolongo, the third between April and October 2021 alone. With the aid of dynamites, 837 inmates said to be awaiting trial were set free. Only some have been rearrested. In September, 240 inmates were similarly set free at the Kaba Medium Security Custodial Center in Kogi State, and not all of them are back in custody. Before then, there was the Oweri jailbreak in Imo State, where more than 1,800 inmates were let loose. Again, not all of them have been rearrested. Analysts suggest that some of those who now roam free contribute to the spate of insecurity across the country. The jail breaks in Edo and neighboring Ondo states during the NSAS protests also readily come to mind. What could be responsible for the growing culture of jail breaks in Nigeria? We took this question to Dr. Oju Agomo, taking into account her more than 25 years' experience advocating welfare and rehabilitation of inmates. When you see many of the facilities that you see people running away, they are you know, or breaking the facility, is usually facilities that have high number of persons who have not been determined whether they are guilty or not. In other words, those you classify as a waiting trial. The facilities are overstretched. So the other facilities, whether it be accommodation, whether it be sanitary, whether it be food, everything is stretched. The second issue is what facilities, how are we fortifying the facilities that we have designated as custodial or correctional centers? The frustration of former Controller General of Corrections, Jafar Ahmed, was palpable as he engaged the media in 2019. I have just raised an issue with uh, 
the Manfro Rivers. That uh, Port Harcourt prison has 804 capacity, it's locking over 4,000, and out of there he said 3,800 are awaiting trial persons. People need not to come as awaiting trial persons and spend years as awaiting trial. There is no need for that. The press should sit up to ensure that those arresting authorities and those who give judgment on this do their work to ensure that they do congest the prisons through formal uh, either giving judgment or discharging and acquainting them to go back to the members of society. As it was then, so it is now. Inmates awaiting trial still constitute more than 70% of the total number. The Oyo State Custodial Center aptly captures the situation. Although established with a capacity of 160 inmates, the custodial center had a total population of 907 inmates at the time of attack. Of this number, those awaiting trial were 837, representing 92% of the inmates, and all of them were set free. Only 64 were actual convicts. So, what are the causes of delay in the dispensation of justice? The need to balance the presumption of innocence which the Constitution raises in favor of the accused person, the need to ensure that justice is served in favor of the victim of the alleged crime, and the need for the society itself to see that, look, the bulwark that the law put in place for the purposes of reward and punishment in order to ensure the bonds of the society is also put in place. Held a solution to all these challenges in 2019, poor implementation of the Nigerian Correctional Service Act means that two years on, the same problems remain. What are the possible solutions? Change what happens in terms of the intention and the conditions and the proportion of the persons who are waiting trial because this is a crisis and then fortify the facilities. The executive has to sit up more than before by making adequate facilities in terms of funding available to the investigative and prosecuting agencies. Another concern raised by actors in the criminal justice system is the cost of prosecuting thousands of persons who could have been easily dealt with using non-custodial measures. Now, having looked at the circumstances and the situation in our various correctional centers, we now begin to look at attempts, continuous attempts that have been made to improve the criminal justice system in Nigeria. The act itself creates a body known as the Administration of Criminal Justice Monitoring Committee. And this monitoring committee is expected to be continuously looking at how the Administration of Criminal Justice Act is being implemented and how states are also coming into making it work. Of course, states are expected to have adopted the Administration of Criminal Justice laws in their various states, and so they are also mandated to have these kind of committees. The first conference of this committee was held in Abuja, and the scale was there to look at how this committee impacts positively on the administration of criminal justice and how it actually monitors its implementation. Once a law is made, particularly one that is thought to be as revolutionary as the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, citizens have a right to assess it based on its impact on the system. And for the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, its impact is assessed based on the awaiting trial numbers that we still have in our courts. As part of the implementation of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, the Act itself directs the establishment of monitoring committees at the federal level and in states that have adopted the law. Only three states are said not to have adopted ACTA yet. So the conference gave a wide opportunity for an in-depth appraisal of both AGJA itself and the monitoring committees. I would not want to believe 
that um, the ACJL monitoring committee doesn't have any effect. In fact, one of the important functions that monitoring committee has to perform is the congestion of courts. And in actual fact, in the performance of these duties, we do visit the con I mean, correctional centers. And when we visit, we normally make release for those that are entitled to those releases. We don't release just capriciously. There are some things we take into effect. We look into whether the circumstances of arrest of that person is not justified under the law, and therefore the continued detention will not be justifiable. Then we look at those that have spent more than the number of years, which even if they have been co I mean convicted, they will have used. Well, we do release them. Then the monitoring committee itself, during our meetings, we look at all stakeholders that are being represented and where they have challenges. We will bring it up. At times, we do even send messages to the State uh, Security Council. Before the law comes into effect, we are always play the stakeholders in the Justice Committee has always played the blame game. What is called the blame game? The prison will blame the prosecutors for not bringing the accused. But with the coming into law, the effect of that law, almost everything took its shape. And uh, today, there are the, the the legal process is faster, criminal wise, than what it used to be in those days. I think substantially we have gained a lot from. We are not seeing it in the statistics of awaiting trials at in our correctional centres. Well, I think uh, we must also <laughs> appreciate the fact that the complexity of the country makes breed more criminals. We must admit that uh, we have a lot of turnout. A lot of turnout, but because there are people keep committing crimes, uh, that, that explains why you still have a lot in the prison. But I must confess to you that, as a stakeholder and, and somebody who's active in the justice sector system, yeah. I know very well that it has played a lot of. You, we now have two, three days trials, criminal trials, mm. even armed robbery, mm. um, very tough. I mean. Capital offences are tried within two or three days. I know CJs in like like Quara takes up murder cases in two three days. So you have you have you have it's, it's no more what it used to be. I love this, this idea of interlocutory applications coming after the 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 hearing of the case is a, is again one of the very fundamental developments in in, in justice sector reform. In those days, we used to have four or five years doing trial within trial. It is now a process that goes within the trial, so it goes all along, so you don't have to waste a lot of time. The pioneer chairman of the monitoring committee, along with several other delegates, agreed that reports of the monitoring committees should be given prompt attention. Gradually, we are putting um, systems and mechanisms in place in terms of the oversight uh, that will, in good time, uh, we be able to impact on these um, challenges and then we will have a bit of positive, especially when people start developing more better attitudinal, um, a, um, a, a better attitude towards managing this process. Uh, and th there's a lot of factors that are responsible, as you and I know. Uh, but there, there has been, um, we've identified the challenges, we've identified the major loopholes. Uh, both in terms of remand proceedings, CJ has set up a committee to deal with that. We have done a practice direction that will be dealing with the issue of remand because yes. some of, it's not all the people who are awaiting trial are, are actually awaiting trial. There, some of them are not even charged. So that is like a major issue that we have identified that it's quite a number of people detained and not actually charged before the court. They are still investigated and they are in the, the correctional facilities. So those ones, we now segregated them. And that's obviously for the first time. You segregate them on paper, but you don't segregate them in the correctional center. That's either, well, that's a matter for the correctional. We've now trained them. We've not trained. We've also sat round table with the correctional service um, you know, services, and they have also identified. We've also advised them in way to manage that process so that they are not just segregated on paper. They're actually segregated. Well, on paper is important because once you have entered that this is not a waiting trial person, it's actually pre-charge. Then they will know how to treat them separately. And then they will also have, we've also adverted um, their mind to the fact that they have power 
to be bringing such people before the court to say that these people Absolutely. should not be should not be with us. Their yes. time, yes. you know, people are given for 14 days, 14 days, mm -hmm. and then if their time have actually expired, yes. there is no reason for them to be kept further. Yes. So the Correctional Service, the Act itself, granted the um, Correctional Service the power mm -hmm. to bring those sort of people, but they were not aware either to. Mm -hmm. And so well, I know that is being managed. As a result of all this, and knowing that the success of Adja is work in progress, the conference of the monitoring committee is now to be annual. I hope we have been able to deal substantially with the issue of the administration of criminal justice, its monitoring, and how these bodies impact positively on our administration of criminal justice in Nigeria. On the scale, we are introducing a segment, a segment to keep educating our viewers on how the law operates generally. And because today our focus is on the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, Olabo Dearewa went out to speak to lawyers on how this legislation is working in Nigeria. So, we take you on this first segment of You and the Law. By virtue of the provisions of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015, an accused person is not presumed innocent by virtue of the fact that you are no longer addressed as an accused, but you are not seen as a mere defendant. So that is very fundamental among the amendments that, uh, that this Act have introduced. Of course, basically, the objective of the Act is well captured in the relevant section of uh, the Act. Section 1 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act clearly stipulates the aims and objectives of the Act. It said the purpose of this Act is to ensure that the system of administration of criminal justice in Nigeria to promote efficient management of criminal justice institutions speedy dispensation of justice, promotion of the society from crime, protection of the society from crime, and protection of the rights and interests of the suspect, the defendants, and the victim. It's equally worthy of note to state that the enactment has brought to bear the enforcement of the, of, of, of the law which makes provision for uh, only criminals or uh, suspected criminals to only be arrested or arraigned as it as it were before now we've had cases where people are arrested because uh, their children i know are alleged to have committed offenses people are arrested because of uh, their, their relatives or spouses are alleged to have committed offenses but as it is now this law the stand provision now Section 7 specifically of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015 has clearly stipulated that there is no arrest in lieu of another person. So where you are not the suspect, irrespective of your affinity, irrespective of your relationship with the person who is uh, the alleged suspect, you can never be tried or even arrested in place of that person. So we equally have uh, the mandatory inventory of properties. By virtue of this enactment now, Section 10 clearly stipulates that once a suspect is arrested, that everything within his possession should be adequately recorded and documented. Before now, people are arrested. You know, you have so many things with you. You have money, you have other belongings. As soon as your property is invaded, your premises is invaded, you know, the police will no want to account for whatever, you know, was taken from your premises and maybe taken from you. But Section 10 now clearly stipulates of that act 
clearly stipulate that there should be adequate documentation, in fact, mandatory documentation of all properties, you know, uh, taken from uh, the suspect at the time of arrest. It is also it also served as a wake up call for prosecutors. If you must take anybody to court, make sure you do a very thorough investigation. When the proceedings eventually begin, you must be very thorough also in the course of proceedings so that you don't subject a citizen to this process twice over a matter which should be done just once. Now this segment, you and the law will continue to run in the years and weeks to come and it is meant to continue to shed light on how the law affects you and how it impacts on society. Another segment that has been regular on the scale is from the courts. And uh, here is Amarachuku Omenka with gists of things that have been happening in the various courts. A 38-year-old man, Sekiru Jamilu, was on Tuesday tracked before an Ejabu magistrate court in Ogum State for alleging testing a sedative WhatsApp message to a housewife. Jamilu was dragged before the court and charged by the police with misconduct in bridging peace in the marriage of one Mrs. Okweme by sending her a WhatsApp message. According to a charge sheet, Jaminu sent a good morning babe message through WhatsApp to Mrs. Okweemi, who is a married woman. The charge read that you, Shekiru Jaminu, male, sent a message in a manner that caused a breach of peace in a marriage between one Mrs. Okweemi by using a word good morning babe on WhatsApp and thereby committed an offense contrary and punishable under Section 249D of the Criminal Code, the first law of Ogun State of Nigeria 2016, no date having fixed for the hearing. Three men have been arraigned in a Keja Magistrate Court for alleging stealing iPhone and other items. The police charged 22-year-old Olua Femi Adeji, 27-year-old Olua Tunji Adoshun, and 24-year-old Peter Oladepo with conspiracy, theft, and falsification. The three defendants, however, pleaded not guilty to the charges. The prosecution counsel, ASP Victor Eruda, told the court that the defendant and the person at large committed the offense in September 11, 2021 at Computer Village, Ikeja. The defendants told items what 1 million naira 10 Bluetooth was 1 million naira and 15 iPhones worth 9.75 million naira. The defendants also stole a MacBook, laptop and other valuable items. According to the persecution, the three defendants also falsified sales invoice containing false information of the items. A Ruda stated that the offense contravened the provision of section 411 287 and 363 of the Criminal Law Code of Lagos State 2015. Magistrate T.O. Tamilo admitted the defendants to a bail in the sum of 300,000 naira each with two sureties in like sum. So much on the scale today, we have uh, focused largely on the Administration of Criminal Justice Act and in subsequent weeks, we shall be looking at other areas of the law that impact on our society. We'll see you again.